Chip. of Imperial Tobacco Limited. This year, 113 players have taken part in the competition for £350,000 of the prize money and a first prize of £70,000. Included in this, £7,000 goes to the player who achieves the highest break in the competition and at this moment that still stands at 134 to Steve Davis. On top of all of this, another £80,000 is still available should any player achieve the maximum 147 break. And this session we have the finish of the first of the semi-finals. They're over the best of 31 frames with a 15 minute interval after the fourth frame of the afternoon. The usual house rules, please no smoke in the auditorium, absolute silence during play and no cameras whatsoever to be used from now on. And first of all to introduce the referee for this afternoon and your referee this afternoon, John Williams. Finalist in the 1983 Professional Players Tournament, a semi-finalist in the 1985 Mercantile Credit Classic, a quarter-finalist in three major tournaments this season, seeded number 16, Joe Johnson. The 1983 Professional Players Champion, the Australia's Masters Champion in 1984, twice previously here, a world semi-finalist, seeded number four, Tony Knowles. <laughs> Just ask the players to come to the head of the table for a couple of photographs, then we're straight into this afternoon's session. Well, I think if Tony pots this red down the right-hand side, he would get position on the black. One. 
Rumble. Joe Johnson, one. Seven. Johnson <coughs> Johnson not making the safety shot quite as difficult for Knowles as he tried to the idea was to leave the cue ball behind the yellow not to the side of it Well, that's a bad sign for Tony. If he's going to get back in this match, he's got to play well.
Well, Johnson had got two chances there. Either straight into the pocket or off the other red. One. Six. Tony obviously just can't get up both threads that he would like to play. Could just pot this, but positions are.